His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of thanks from Egyptian President Abdel Fattah El Sisi after departing the Kingdom of Bahrain following talks with His Majesty. President Al Sisi expressed thanks and appreciation for the warm welcome and hospitality he received, commending the positive talks held with His Majesty the King regarding bilateral ties and regional and Arab and international issues of common concern. He highlighted the deep-rooted historic relations between the two countries, looking forward to further boosting them in all fields. He wished His Majesty continued health and happiness and for the people of Bahrain further progress and prosperity. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Gudebiya Palace yesterday Saudi Foreign Minister Adil bin Ahmed Al Jubair in Bahrain to participate in the 11th IISS Manamid Dialogue. His Majesty the King underlined the depth of the fraternal historic relations existing between the two countries and their people in various fields. He also appreciated the historic role and the leadership of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, in consolidation of the GCC march and the service of Arab and Islamic issues, as well as its efforts in strengthening security and stability both regionally and internationally. They also discussed regional and international developments in the framework of joint cooperation and coordination between the two countries. For his part, the Saudi Foreign Minister expressed gratitude to His Majesty the King for his hospitality and warm reception and for Bahrain's hosting of the Manama Dialogue. He also underlined the efforts of His Majesty the King and the leading role of His Majesty in promoting brotherly relations between the two countries, praising the position of the Kingdom of Bahrain in GCC and Arab issues and the positive and fruitful contributions in strengthening security and stability in the region. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Gudebia Palace yesterday the German Defence Minister Dr. Ursula von der Leyen in Bahrain to take part in the 11th IISS Manama Dialogue. His Majesty the King underlined the distinguished progressing relations between the two countries in various domains, underlining Bahrain's keen to desire to boost aspects of military and defence cooperation for the benefit of the two countries. His Majesty also underlined the contribution of Germany in promoting international peace and security. The meeting discussed regional and international issues and matters of common concern. For her part, the German minister thanked His Majesty the King for his keen desire to boost relations with Germany. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Gudebiya Palace yesterday the U.S. Deputy Foreign Minister Antony Blinken. His Majesty the King reviewed with the U.S. official the close historic bilateral relations between the two countries and its progress at all levels. He underlined the keen desire of Bahrain to support these relations and upgrade them to wider horizons of joint cooperation and coordination for the benefit of the two countries and their people.
His Majesty underlined the role played by the United States in supporting international efforts to establish security and stability in the region. The U.S. official expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad for Bahrain's hosting of this important forum, which deals with various regional and international interests in security and political issues. He also praised the existing relations of cooperation between the two countries. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Qudaybiyah Palace yesterday the Arab League Secretary General Dr. Nabil Al Arabi, the UN Envoy to Yemen Ismail Uld Al Sheikh, and the GCC Secretary General Abdul Latif Al Zayani. His Majesty the King exchanged with them views on the agenda of the Manama Dialogue, including security, political, and economic issues of regional and international concern. They also reviewed the situation in Yemen, underlining the role of the United Nations in maintaining security and stability in the country. His Majesty praised the role of the Arab League in serving Arab issues. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received yesterday at Gudebia Palace the British Secretary of State for Foreign and Commonwealth Affairs, Philip Hammond, on the sidelines of the 11th Manama Dialogue. His Majesty the King reviewed with the British official the long-standing deep and historic ties between Bahrain and the United Kingdom in various domains for the benefit of the two countries and their people. His Majesty blessed the British naval facilities in Bahrain, underlining Bahrain's support for all efforts to maintain international peace and security. His Majesty also underlined the contributions of, the Brit of Britain in maintaining peace and security in the region. They also reviewed regional and international developments. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Qudaybiyah Palace yesterday the Administrator of the United Nations Development Programme, Ms. Helen Clark. 
His Majesty underlined the efforts and initiatives launched by the United Nations Development Programme in Bahrain, which have contributed to strengthening the capacity of the Kingdom in the fields of sustainable development and human development within the framework of good relations and constructive cooperation with the UN organization and specialized agencies in many of the programs and humanitarian, economic and social projects. His Majesty the King stressed the support of the Kingdom of Bahrain for all developmental programs and the initiatives undertaken by the United Nations organizations and its commitment to the establishment of an effective partnership with them. His Majesty thanked the UN official for her participation in the Manama Dialogue, which reflects the keenness of the international organization on different ideas and insights that contribute to the strengthening of ties and relations between the states. For her part, the Director of the United Nations Development Programme expressed her thanks and appreciation to His Majesty for supporting the programmes and initiatives launched by the United Nations Development Programme. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Gudebia Palace today a number of senior state officials. He expressed pride and appreciation for everyone who took part in honouring Bahrain internationally in all fields. He wished success to the President of the Asian Football Confederation, Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, in International Federation of Football FIFA elections. The Prime Minister also highlighted the tremendous efforts of the President of Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, Sheikh Hamad bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and contribute, who contributed in Bahrain's honour of attaining the Silver Award during its participation in Milano Expo 2015. He said such an achievement is added to Bahrain's international accomplishments, commending the efforts of Bahrain's people in the field of literature, knowledge, politics and, econom and economy. In regards to national and regional development, his Royal Highness the Prime Minister confirmed that economic and security challenges facing the region and the world have grown to directly impact the development process. He confirmed the government is creating the needed tools to maintain its development through preserving security and safety and eliminating terrorism. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Gudebia Palace today Kuwait's Deputy Chief of Staff, Sheikh Abdullah Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Sabah, and Kuwait's President of the National Security Bureau, Sheikh Thamir Al Ali Al Sabah, visiting the Kingdom to take part in the 11th IISS Manama Dialogue. The Prime Minister confirmed the special nature of Bahraini Kuwaiti relations, stressing Bahrain's keenness to open new horizons of cooperation and meet the aspirations of both countries and people. His Royal Highness wished Kuwait further progress and prosperity under its wise leadership, highlighting the importance of meetings among senior officials, such as the Manama Dialogue, in unifying visions and ideas in regard to the security and stability of the region. For their part, the Kuwaiti officials expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his ongoing efforts to reinforce joint cooperation. They also commended the existing brotherly ties between the two countries' leaderships and people, highlighting the Kingdom's progress in the all fields.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Gudebia Palace today the outgoing Egyptian ambassador to Bahrain, Issam Awad Safir. The Prime Minister highlighted the deep-rooted brotherly relations between the two countries, expressing satisfaction of the level of joint cooperation in various fields. He stressed Bahrain's keenness to expand fields of cooperation with Egypt for the best interest of both countries and people, commending Egypt's role in supporting Arab causes as well as its supportive stance towards Bahrain. His Royal Highness wished Egypt and its people further progress and prosperity, lauding the efforts of Ambassador Sam Awad during his diplomatic term in the kingdom and wished him continued success. For his part, the outgoing Egyptian ambassador expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for the f support he received from the government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister during his term in Bahrain. He also praised the brotherly relations and joint cooperation between the two countries, as well as the mutual keenness to further consolidate them. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa, yesterday met with Saudi Foreign Minister Adil bin Ahmed Al Jubair in Bahrain to participate in the 11th IISS Manama Dialogue. His Royal Highness praised the pivotal role played by, the Sa by Saudi Arabia in regional affairs and highlighted the GCC country's successful diplomatic efforts to help establish dialogue to secure lasting peace in the Republic of Yemen. In this regard, His Royal Highness underscored the importance of continuing to align GCC efforts in order to achieve GCC countries' shared objectives. Other issues currently affecting regional security and stability were also discussed during the meeting. For his part, Minister al Jubair expressed Saudi Arabia's appreciation for Bahrain's unwavering support for GCC cooperation and its effective role in maintaining regional security and stability through its participation in the Saudi-led coalition in Yemen. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa, met yesterday with Yemen's Foreign Minister, Riyad Yassin, on the sidelines of the IISS Manama Dialogue. His Royal Highness welcomed the President of Yemen's position on working towards a political solution to solve the current crisis and achieve stability in Yemen, and emphasized that Bahrain would continue to support the legitimate government and all humanitarian efforts to, port, to support those affected by the conflict. He said the participation of the Foreign Minister at this year's Manama Dialogue demonstrates the government's commitment to achieving lasting security and stability in Yemen and the region. For his part, Yemen's foreign minister expressed his appreciation for Bahrain's continued efforts as part of the Arab coalition led by Saudi Arabia and Bahrain's significant contributions in protecting Yemen and its people. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa met yesterday with the British Secretary of State for Foreign and Commonwealth Affairs Philip Hammond on the sidelines of the 11th Manama Dialogue. His Royal Highness and Foreign Minister Hammond welcomed the deep and historic ties between Bahrain and the United Kingdom, which underpinned the country's collaborative efforts in addressing a range of critical issues facing the region. The Crown Prince emphasized that the Saudi-led Arab coalition's decisive military campaign in Yemen has helped advance security and stability in the country, and that a political agreement must now be pursued in order to resolve the conflict. He highlighted that the swift action applied to resolving the conflict in Yemen, alongside close collaboration between members of the coalition, has effectively helped to protect the country's sovereignty and its state institutions. His Royal Highness praised the strategic partnership between the Bahrain Defence Force and the British Armed Forces, which cover various areas including training and knowledge and exchange. Ex addressing the current crisis in Syria, His Royal Highness stressed that the need for aligning regional and international efforts to resolve the crisis has never been greater, and that the dire humanitarian situation must be addressed and as quickly as possible. The meeting also presented an opportunity to discuss the P5 plus one nuclear deal with Iran. His Royal Highness noted that while Bahrain welcomes the deal, Iran's continued interference in the kingdom's affairs seek only to endanger security and stability in Bahrain and poses a serious threat to wider regional stability. His Royal Highness and the Foreign, Minister, Foreign Secretary 
then discussed the rise of violent extremism across the region and agreed that military action cannot be the only solution, but that international parallel social and economic development programs, which deliver hope, opportunity and prosperity to the people of the region, should be carried out. The Crown Prince welcomed the UK's positive engagement in Bahrain's domestic programme and reform, noting the UK's valuable expertise in the areas of oversight and institutional reform. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met yesterday with the German Defence Minister Dr Ursula von der Leyen on the sidelines of the 11th Manama Dialogue. His Royal Highness underscored the importance of preserving the state foundations as a means to maintain long-term stability. In this regard, His Royal Highness highlighted that it is this commitment that has underpinned every aspect of the Saudi-led Arab coalition's efforts in Yemen to restore the country's stability. He affirmed it was essential to prevent extremist movements from taking advantage of current efforts aimed at achieving long-term positive change. His Royal Highness then noted Germany's continued support to the GCC on a range of regional security and development challenges. He also highlighted the strong bilateral relations between Bahrain and Germany and stressed the importance of continuing to enhance political, economic and security cooperation and coordination. The Crown Prince then praised Germany's participation in this year's event as it reflects the country's commitment to addressing key security issues impacting the region. His Royal Highness and the German Defence Minister also discussed a range of other regional and international issues. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa met with a delegation of British Members of Parliament and the Conservative Middle East Council today, headed by Sir Alan Duncan MP. His Royal Highness highlighted that Bahraini-UK relations are built on deep-rooted ties between the two countries and that these historic ties underpin positive collaboration across a range of areas. He welcomed the UK's continued support to Bahrain's domestic reform programme, stressing that reform is a sustainable and collaborative process and that the Kingdom remains resolute in achieving its goals under His Majesty the King's reform and development programme. His Royal Highness highlighted that Bahrain's continued collaboration with its allies and partners forms an important component of its domestic and international policy decision-making process. The Crown Prince and members of the delegation also discussed a number of regional and international issues covered during this year's IISS Manama Dialogue. During the second day of the IISS Manama Dialogue, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa held a series of bilateral meetings with senior foreign officials, including Minister of Interior of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, Salama Hamad, Head of Mission of the Royal Cabinet of Morocco, Yusuf Amrani, Senior Minister of State, Minister of Defence and Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Singapore, Dr. Mohammed Maliki bin Osman, Deputy of the Kuwaiti Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Sheikh Abdullah Al Nawaf Al Sabah, and President of the National Security Bureau of Kuwait, Sheikh Thamar Al Ali Al Sabah. The Crown Prince emphasised the importance of the delegates' participation in the conference's discussions, which reflects their commitment to working together to resolve complex regional and international security issues, and welcomed the shared international commitment to protecting the region's citizens and ex from extremism ideologies, which only serve to undermine regional stability.
PDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa met today the General Chief of Staff of Yemen, Major General Mohammed Al Makdishi, and his accompanying delegation in the Kingdom to take part in the 11th IISS Manama Dialogue. BDF Commander-in-Chief reviewed with the Yemeni officials brotherly relations between the two countries and ways of reinforcing joint cooperation and coordination. The meeting also discussed issues of common concern. Minister of Foreign Affairs Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa met with Singapore's Senior Minister of State of Ministry of Defence and Ministry of Foreign Affairs Dr. Mohammed Maliki bin Othman. Sheikh Khalid commended the excellent relations between the two countries, confirming Bahrain's keenness to enhance communication with Singapore, which has achieved numerous developmental achievements. He said bilateral relations will witness further progress in all fields due to the mutual keenness of both countries to further consolidate them. For his part, Dr. bin Othman highlighted Bahrain's achievements in many fields and confirmed his country's keenness to expand cooperation with the Kingdom in all aspects. Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with Lebanese Minister of Interior and Municipalities Neha Al Mashnouk. The meeting discussed bilateral relations and ways of developing them in various fields for the best interests of both countries and people. Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed confirmed Bahrain's keenness to enhance cooperation with Lebanon. For his part, Minister Al Mashnouk expressed his country's keenness to reinforce ties with the Kingdom in all fields, wishing Bahrain further progress and prosperity. Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa also met the German Defence Minister Ursula von der Leyen. Sheikh Khalid commended the excellent relations between the two countries, confirming Bahrain's keenness to enhance communication with Germany, which has achieved numerous developmental achievements. He said bilateral relations will witness further progress in all fields due to mutual keenness of both countries to further consolidate them. He lauded the role of Germany in maintaining the security and stability of the region and their efforts in overcoming their own challenges. German Defence Minister confirmed her country's keenness to expand cooperation with the Kingdom in all aspects. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, met with the Indian Deputy National Security Advisor, Arvind Gupta. The meeting included discussions regarding further ways to enhance joint cooperation, especially in the economic field, and also discussed ways to combat terrorism. Mr Gupta confirmed his country's keenness to expand cooperation with the Kingdom in all aspects. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met the Special Envoy for Yemen, Ismail Oud Cheikh Ahmed, in which both sides discussed the recent developments in Yemen. The Minister affirmed Bahrain's firm stance on restoring security and stability in Yemen. He also stressed the Kingdom's support to legitimacy in Yemen as well as all initiatives that aim to achieve progress and prosperity to the Yemeni people. And now, finally, Bahrain Television reporter Danielle Duporto attended the Manama Dialogue's final day of sessions and brings us this concluding report. Should be by the, neighbors. the 11th annual Manama Dialogues, which officially concluded today, have helped high-level delegations from around the world to understand and develop a coordinated response to the pressing security and humanitarian issues plaguing the region and affecting the global community. Well, what's interesting is that at the beginning of this dialogue, uh, foreign ministers were meeting in Vienna to discuss Syria and as soon as those meetings were over they all jumped on a plane and came here. So that shows the importance both of real politics going on but also the Manama dialogue as a forum where they continue if you like in a different sort of way. I've also just been sitting on a panel about Yemen where I hope we are just on the edge of de-escalating the military activity and moving towards political dialogue probably in Geneva. So 
if you like, Manama is in the middle of everything that's going on in two of the most difficult countries uh, facing both political instability, conflict and humanitarian uh, challenges. It's been interesting that the prepared remarks by the government officials have been much more candid than they have been in the past. Um, and that was, I think, intentional by everybody. So that prompted a lot of the side discussions that we just talked about and uh, the candor with which people were discussing some very sensitive issues is helpful because that's what will move the process forward when people truly understand the positions uh, and the thought process, processes of, uh, of others. Topics of discussion range from specific regional conflicts like in Yemen and Syria to general trends such as preventing extremism and promoting broader development to stem humanitarian crises. As the world has witnessed with increasing frequency, these issues have been spilling across national and regional borders, affecting the global community and thus requiring comprehensive solutions. The priority for the refugee, uh, refugees, you need to solve the problem at the source. So first of all, we need to stop the war and reconstruct Syria and Iraq. We wanted to make sure that there's a link between security and development. And you see from the past, we have always this experience that we have a crisis situation. There's a humanitarian response to crisis. And then it's supposedly the crisis is over. And then we move into recovery and development. But now we have very long ongoing crisis and the people are living there and the people are suffering. Um, many people don't see opportunities, don't see a sense to stay in the place where they are. We have over 7 million people displaced in, internally in Syria. We have uh, another 4 million in the surrounding countries and now going to Europe. So, so the question is how can we create opportunities? Helen Clark uh, put a new term forward which is called uh, emergency development. So how do we maintain the idea of uh, helping the people um, to see some opportunities and even in this very difficult situation where security is a priority, where it's the most important point, but in this situation people still have to go on with their lives. The security and humanitarian issues resulting from the many conflicts of the Middle East will indeed require a coordinated global effort to resolve. And this year's Manama Dialogues have indeed provided a very useful platform for progress at a time when it is sorely needed. Reporting for Bahrain Television, I'm Danielle DeForto. During the 11th Manama Dialogue, the Executive Director of the International Institute for Strategic Studies, Middle East, Sir John Jenkins, commended the remarks of Saudi Arabia's Foreign Minister, Adel bin Ahmed al Jaber in regards to Yemen and Syria. If you, if you think back to yesterday and to uh, uh, the Saudi foreign minister's uh, intervention, and it was fantastic he came, and he came from, from Vienna, especially to speak here. So he spoke about, about Syria, he talked about Iran as well, and he talked about, about Yemen. I mean, in a way, uh, these, are the, these are the big issues. Um, and it was interesting, I thought, what he said uh, about, about, about the way that, uh, that the Saudi uh, government and uh, its GCC colli colleagues are framing these issues and framing the possibility of, of some sort of, uh, of some sort of uh, uh, negotiating process or collective approach in which Iran has a role um, Towards all of this, we saw. I think it was. It was. Um, there was a combination. I thought of, uh, of, uh, of, of of clarity and firmness of purpose on Syria, but also willingness and openness to the idea of a of a, of a constructive solution.